We've set up Rails and we've set up Postgres, and today we're going to continue building on top of that foundation by adding a front-end service onto our Kubernetes setup for deploying our Rails application using Nginx. Continuing to prep our Rails application to be deployable on Kubernetes, we need to add something that sits in front of Rails in order to serve up static assets and to handle our SSL, which we actually didn't do before, but we're going to do that in this tutorial series. So we're going to add a front-end service this time, which is going to be Nginx, and that's going to sit in front of Rails. In getting everything ready to go through this tutorial today, I booted everything up and I took a look at my meal plan service, which is directly connected to the Rails application, and I couldn't actually load it. I ran into this error. So an unhandled low-level error has occurred. The application logs may have more detail. For us to take a look at these logs, we can use kubectl get pods. And then we'll grab the pod for meal plan. And then we can do kubectl logs and then that pod ID. Now we can scroll up and you'll see that our database meal plan production doesn't exist. So I was kind of scratching my head about this a little bit, trying to figure out what was wrong. And eventually I found what I think is a bug in Minikube. And also uh, I put a typo in the previous tutorial. So let's go fix those right now. So the first place we're going to go is into deployments, postgres.yaml. And var lib postgresql db dash data is not the right spot. This is not the PG data. Um, this is not where the Postgres data is going. So the PG data environment variable would allow you to control this with a Postgres image. And uh, by default, it goes to slash var slash lib slash postgresql slash data, not db data. So that one particular typo actually would have caused this error. But even fixing this, we would still continue to run into errors. And it's kind of weird why. So let's back out of this. And before we get going too far, we'll do kubectl get pv. And we'll just look at the persistent volumes that exist. So this is the one that we're using right now. It's bound to our Postgres pv claim, which is the claim that we def uh, created. This was automatically created for us. So if we do kubectl describe, and then we paste, oh, we paste pv in here and then uh, the actual ID of this. And then if we enter, you'll see that the host path is the kind that this is. And this is the only kind you can use when you're working with Minikube. And it goes into slash temp host path provisioner. Um, and then this is where it's at. And the documentation states that this will persist through Minikube being started and stopped. But the truth is, is that doesn't actually happen. So one of the other places that the docs say that you can put stuff is in slash data. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually manually create a persistent volume and set this up to save our data in slash data. So now we can open our deployments Postgres backup. And down here at the bottom in our persistent volume claim, we're going to start making some tweaks. So this is going to stay mostly the same, actually. Uh, the only difference being is that we're going to add another section that is for volume name because we're going to explicitly set this now. And we'll set it to Postgres PV for persistent volume. And then we're going to add another object down here. So this will be of API version v1. The kind for this is going to be persistent volume. And then metadata wise, we're going to do basically the same stuff we've done up to this point. It's going to have a name. It's going to be exactly what we said before. So Postgres dash PV. And then it also needs a spec segment. So this is going to have access modes. And it's actually going to be identical to what we have on the persistent volume claim. So we're going to do read write once. Capacity. This is going to be a storage of five gigabytes, which is what we're requesting up there. And then lastly, we want a host path, which this is the important part, that the path is going to be to slash data, and then we get to define what we're actually storing this at. So we'll call this meal plan Postgres. So we'll save that. And now when we tear this stuff down and spin it back up, what we're actually going to do is we're going to ensure that we're saving into slash data. And then now when we tear down Minikube by doing Minikube stop and Minikube start, uh, we'll actually keep our data. 
this is a problem you wouldn't probably like you won't run into this in production because you won't use a host volume in production kubernetes doesn't work that way you'll use something else which eventually we'll get to that but for right now this just fixes an issue we have in development so we can save this file and we want to kubectl delete f postgre deployments postgres this will delete everything that we have in that file it'll give us an error probably saying that there is no uh, persistent volume okay we expected that error because we defined it even though it didn't exist yet but this just allows us to now we can go and recreate everything that was here if we were doing this in a more production-esque setting we probably wouldn't blow away everything we've got but in this particular case this is just an easy way for us to do it so now we have that and we're going to need to recreate our database because it no longer exists so we can go back over how to do that by doing kubectl get pods just so we can see these again and we need this meal plan pod again now that we have the id for our meal plan container we can do kubectl exec paste in that meal plan id or the pod id sorry we'll make it a take in standard in then we want to make it a tty also and then we'll do a double dash to say that we're done passing in arguments to this and this will allow us to specify the command that we want to exec so we'll do bundle exec rake db colon setup db colon migrate and this is what we expect to see it's a little more colorful than it used to be but uh, we created our database and we successfully ran a bunch of sql to build up our tables Looking in our browser again, if we refresh the page, we now see that we're back to having our standard meal plan layout. Now that we're done fixing the errors we created in the previous tutorial, we can actually move forward building out our front end. So looking at the files that we have, we have a site.conf file right here. And this is where we had previously set up Nginx to run with Docker Compose in production using the Docker Compose prod file. So we're actually going to continue to use this, um, but we're going to have to create our own image because we can't use Docker Compose to manually um, map in things into an image like we were before. So the way we're going to do this is we're just going to make an Nginx directory. And we're going to copy site.conf into Nginx. And now we're going to write a Docker file. And this Docker file is going to be really simple because all we need it for is to say that we want the Nginx image, except for we want to sub in this particular piece of configuration. So we're going to go from Nginx 1.11.13, and then we'll use the Alpine variation since it's smaller. And then we're going to copy in site.conf to be Etsy. Nginx conf.d default.conf. And this is just a special file type that says Nginx, this is my default site configuration. So we can save this file now. And we're going to go and take a look at the Nginx site.conf too, because we're going to make some, a little bit of a tweak to it here. So we were using prod app on line 18 down here. And the reason for this is because in Docker Compose, when it sets up the networking, it was setting up prod app to be our application. Uh, now that we're doing this in Kubernetes land, we already know that we have a service for meal plans. So we're going to just talk to that. So we're actually just going to call this meal plan because this is the name of the, the service that it's going to actually talk to. We are going to add one more thing up top here. We're going to say upstream meal plan server meal plan and this is kind of here we're not going to do a whole lot with it right now but we can make changes to this later on and this just specifies uh, server specific configuration so now we can save this file and quit back out with everything set up that we need to create our image we can go ahead and do that now uh, we have to make sure that we're connected to the minikube host as our docker host so we can do that by eval minikube and then docker dash env That'll set everything up for the Docker portion. And now we're going to do Docker build, and then we're going to tag this. Uh, and we should probably have really specific tag names for this, right? So uh, I'm going to say this is Coder Journey, and then we're going to call this Meal Plan front end because it's very specific right now. And we can make something a little bit more dynamic later on, but for right now, this is good. And then I'm going to say this is 1.0 of the Meal Plan front end. And then we have to point it to the directory that contains the Docker file that we want to use. So we'll point that to Nginx. And I misspelled build. So docker build dash t to tag it to the Nginx directory. 
All right, and our image is built. Now we go through much of the same uh, pathway that we went through when setting up our previous service and deployments. So the same thing we did for meal plan, except for and with meal plan's case, we set it up in different files. We're going to take the same approach that we took with Postgres and put these both in the same file. So let's go and look at Vim deployments, and then we'll just call it frontend.yaml. I'm going to load the contents of this file up, and then we'll go through it so you don't have to see me type. OK, going through this, we create a service first, and that's these first 13 lines. And we're going to call it front end. It's going to go from port 80 as being the exposed port, and uh, it's going to point to port 80. So that means the service is going to expose port 80, and then it's going to look for port 80 in its own deployment. It's going to find the deployment by looking for something that has the labels of app, meal plan, tier, front end. So that's when we get down into our deployment. This is our front end deployment, but we have to set up the proper metadata so that the query that we said right here in our service is going to work out. So we have metadata labels, app, meal plan, tier, front end. And then the most interesting bit is going to be our spec, which contains the containers that exist inside this pod. And the image is going to be the very long winded name that we just created for our meal plan front end. We're going to call this container Nginx. This is going to be kind of internal to us. And then we do have this new thing down here. So this is lifecycle pre-stop exec command. And what this is saying is that for this container and its lifecycle, like there are certain hooks that we can tie into. And before we stop this container, we want to execute a very specific command. And what this is doing is it's saying uh, USR sbin nginx dash s quit. So that would be the string that it would build out and kind of pipe that through. Um, executing commands through code in this way, sometimes you have to pass through as a list. But what this command would do is it allows Nginx to quit gracefully, preventing us from just chopping off in the middle of a request. So we're going to serve out all the remaining requests that we have because we're going to stop gracefully. So we can save this file. We'll do what we've done so many times before, and we'll create our objects using kubectl create-f, and then we'll give it the name of the file that we want, which is deployments frontend.yaml. So it looks like it created our deployment, but service in version v1 cannot be handled as service. So I'm going to assume that we fat fingered something in here, so let's go take a look. So what we actually got wrong here is line 11 and 12. This isn't a list. It's two separate items underneath selector. So we just need to delete this dash and back things up a couple spaces, save it, and now we should be good to go. We are going to get an error when we try to create this again because we're already going to have a deployment, but it should still create our service. Yeah, service front end created, but it could not create deployment because it already exists. Now for us to access this, we're going to use minikube say service front end and then ask it for the URL. This will give us the specific details for that. We'll go take a look and you'll notice that it, it gives us the same thing on a separate port but that's just because we can't actually expose port 80 in this particular instance. In a later tutorial we'll actually set this up to serve up our static assets so that we can have the styles in our meal plan application again but for now this is okay. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know some people have commented in the past that they like to see it when I make mistakes, and this episode was chocked full of them. I apologize for the typos and errors that I had placed in the previous tutorial, but I hope that you learned something through this one. Anywho, be sure to leave a comment down below and tell me what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed this, then don't forget to like it, share it, and subscribe to the channel. Have a nice week.